Hello, everyone. Welcome to our podcast with returning good mensch, Mr. Eli Weber. We're going to be touching on all things in the world financially, uh, as well as geopolitically and other combinations thereof. And we'll see what uh, is going on in Eli's world as well. As always, if you're new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share as it helps our audience grow and others get the knowledge you're being afforded. Brother Eli, how are you doing? Good, sir. I'm doing great. It's so nice to see you. As always, a pleasure. So, uh, I, I keep abreast of your shows as much as I can. Sometimes I can watch them daily. Sometimes I can, you know, scroll through a few times a week and get a reprise. Um, but I would love for our audience and your audience already to kind of hear, you know, what you're talking about, whatever the information you're gleaning as of late. So I'm I'm really focused on ascension at this point of of learning how to to navigate with creator with with force. Uh, talking a lot about intuitive powers, which is, um, I think, very important so that we tune into this reality and and are sensitive and take note of things that come into our consciousness, whether they be people, place, and things, or a thought, or a feeling that we stay aware of what's going on. And the, the thing that I'm, I'm emphasizing now, because it seems like we're at a tipping point with with the economy for sure with the with the end of the agreement with Saudi Arabia as of today really in the financial markets and some people are saying tomorrow that we're really at a tipping point and that it's critically important right now in my opinion to stay positive and just you know don't let them don't you know both patriots and non-patriots are all into this fear porn just stay away just don't let people get to you and stay strong and and move forward absolutely no I, i'm with you you know that's why i love doing my daily walks out in the field eli with the lord because it's the, the one time i can put the phone away put the world away to really spend time with you know jesus yeshua and uh, get to hear from him and you know, what he wants from me, uh, what he's trying to say, because it's hard to hear him with the din of distractions. If we don't spend any time with him, if we don't disconnect, we can't really do that. You know, whether you're a Christian or not, you still need to get away from the tech technology of the world and get that quiet time for your own sanity and self-preservation. So I think it's good that you're, uh, you know, that you're focusing on that with your audience. Um, any uh, anything that you're getting from your audience for updates or anything that you think is particularly um, intriguing? We're, we're just not really that focused on on the actual events. We're really more focused on ascension. But I, like you, I, I spend we spend between two and three hours walking around my girlfriend and I and uh, we it's I think it's about it's about getting into the now getting, you know, getting past your own thoughts, have you know, we are bombarded internally and externally with with thoughts with doubts with all these things to just get into a place where you're just like you're looking at a tree and you're you're with that in that consciousness like you're not looking mm. at the tree and thinking about you know i got a phone call to make back home so you know i i think that's really important we're, we're just getting also getting some sun by the way are you are you in california or tennessee i'm in california but that's uh that's the next move once this happens yep not a bad thing. I mean, California is gorgeous. I'm heading in that direction soon. I hope. Uh, you know, I like the sunshine out there. I like the the drier air. But you, know, it just mm -hmm. okay. So I'm looking at this date. I'm looking at June 10th, and I'm thinking like, okay, the fiat deal with Saudi Arabia is done. Mm -hmm. Why is the mark? You know, and gold is and silver are kind of they pulled back a little bit. They're starting to go up again. I think. And the uh, why is the market not reacting to to the reality of the situation? I, I I don't really understand that. Do you? Well, yes. I I mean I think I do. I think our team does certainly, and I, I'm able to you know assess what they put in front of me, and we talk about things and pray about it, as you said, and put things together. I know what their agenda is, and I know what the real behind the scenes you know reality is. Uh, what's interesting, Eli, is we we actually were on uh, Nick Veniamen's show a couple weeks ago talking about the imminent demise of the petro dollar. Uh, but taking it a step deeper behind the curtain, to your point, uh, I had an interview last week with Jim Willie. I was telling you offline, and he actually educated us to the fact that the petro dollar actually died two years ago. Hmm. Uh, that what really happened was the Prince Mohammed bin Salman 
the original one was removed because he had dementia. He didn't know where he was, didn't know what he was signing. They took him to Russia, had no idea what day it was. And that was obviously going to be problematic. So one thing he educated us on that you probably know, certainly in uh, Hebraic culture, we know in the Old Testament, we have tons of tribes of people who did a great job of being fruitful and multiplying. <laughs> and the Arabs and the Muslims are much in the same way, right? So I bring that up to say that uh, the Muslims or the Arab culture usually has, from what as I understand it, between 10 and 15 wives, and then they have multiple offspring. So there's lots of half brothers and half sisters contending for the throne and next, and as you say, ascension, in this case, politically. So uh, they just replaced him with a half brother who's doing things now, which started to make sense in the aspect that, do you remember several years ago when President Trump was, I, I think, believe went to Riyadh for a summit and he patted Prince Salman on the back? That's a no-no unless, unless you're the king uh, or, and or, unless that's not the original Ben Salman which kind of starts to make sense. So by technical terms, the petrodollar did die two years ago as I looked into it. This is, as according to Jim, this is the official front of scenes now. So yeah, yesterday it went. So what that means is that the Saudi now will be able to trade in petro yuan, gold, silver, XRP, and many other things, whatever they want, French francs, German bear, whatever. And OPEC will be able to do the same thing as well. I mean, who the heck was OPEC to tell Saudi Arabia, Iraq, how to govern their own oil, you know, in the first place. So it breaks up the monopoly, the hegemony of that. As far as your question, I had to give you that to answer your question. As far as the, so I apologize, folks. I'm trying to be as succinct as I can. There's a lot of moving parts. As far as the market, it's all manipulated because they're just pumping it up. So it's price suppression. You have two things. You have them suppressing the market of gold and silver. And then you have people cashing out profits as silver went up to pass the $30 mark. People took profits along the way. That has a, a temporary effect. Up, it's up today almost 1.5% silver. So they're not going to be able to slam it down. Plus, you have people like us buying gold and silver, or copper, or whatever they can incrementally with you know, dealers, with you know, con, uh, pawn shops. People have gold and silver chains and jewelry at home. Maybe they have an abundance of it and they, they need some cash and they need to you know, cash that out just to stay afloat or whatever the situation might be. So I wouldn't be dissuaded too much, Eli, about the illusion of the market um, because we have Wednesday, we have an interest rate decision. We think they might do a pause until July because they don't have an, a, a meeting in August. But I wouldn't be surprised. It's been a couple months now if they do a rate cut in um in July. And that's going to send the market temporarily up in the last bit of this balloon. But what that also does is move up gold and silver and cryptos precipitously. So nothing is having a pattern of normalcy like it did in the past because we're not, we're, we're transitioning away from uh, the cabal system. Okay. So let me, let me, add, let me just add a little more um, uh, detail to the question. It, who sure. is, who is suppressing the, the market from, uh, from doing what it it could be doing is it is it the white hats or the black hats or is it both i don't i don't think it's so much about white or black hats i think it's hmm, just my personal opinion what i'm saying i think trump is allowing the fed to destroy themselves sun Tzu, art of war never let never interfere with an enemy in the process of defeating themselves he's he's letting people see there's no war i mean you know optically uh, there's a war, but it's an information war. I'm talking about like bullets and things like that in the sense of World War III. Um, he's letting them defeat themselves off the cliff. Once they do rate cuts, that booms up the market temporarily, but what it does is it kills the dollar. The more that you don't inflate the dollar, it's like somebody on life support. I'm, I don't want to have to use that analogy, but it's something people are familiar with. If you've got something or someone on life support, when you start pulling the plugs out, you know, the, the demise rapidly happens more and more. So I think it's, I think it's moves and counter moves to your question, but ultimately I think it's the good guys allowing the system to fall off the cliffs so people can see it. People have less confidence in the market. They have less confidence in the dollar and they start moving away from that into precious metals and other things to become their own central bank. 
So, so it's kind of you're you're seeing a sort of controlled demolition, and also yeah. like a a game theory, like it's you know, like they they're allowing the the bad guys to operate. I mean, I I kind of I I think that's I feel that also that I I feel that mm -hmm. the uh, the 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 banksters are propping it up to some degree, and and the white hats are letting them uh, do that. I mean, I tend to see things yeah. in the in the white and black hat, but it it's it, I think it's much deeper than that. I mean, I think it's yeah. All right. So, um, so, so in terms of like material, you know, gains and and good investments in this thing, when do you think we'll see things like the DNR, like uh, the the cryptocurrencies, gold and silver? When do you think we'll really see them flare up? Sure. So before I get into that, Eli, let me just back up a second because I was thinking of a visual analogy everybody can relate to in reg in regards to the market. You said it perfectly, controlled demolition. That's exactly right. So the best analogy I can come up with is for those who are, whether you like or you're familiar with sports, you can visualize. If you take a stadium, uh, okay, we'll take you, you're in Queens, right? So you take the Mets as an example. You had the old Shea Stadium and then City Field. Remember that? And they built them close to each other. And they started when, as City Field was being erected and ready to go after the season was over, they controlled demolition because it's so close to the new, to the new stadium you have to implode it inside of itself so that you remove the collateral damage on the new stadium. In the same parlance, you have the, you have the asset backed God's money versus the cabal system and the cabal system is being imploded to have the least amount of collateral damage on the people in the new system. So that's the analogy I would use. If that makes sense. That that's a beautiful analogy because you're right. It it's both destruction and construction at the same time. Because yeah. I mean, I, I assume the QFS system is uh, is building traction. Is building. I mean, there there was that there was that tape of the guy saying, "We have it all. We've been collecting mm -hmm. information for 15 years." Sure. Steele, I think his name is Robert Steele, maybe somebody like that. But anyway, he says, "Oh, Robert David Steele, yeah." Robert Jefferson, he says, we have it all. The only way you can get out of this is to cop a plea. Right. So, you know, if that's the case, we're not really we're not really seeing the moving parts. And, and you you gave me a really big like a, a really big clue here when you said that it's already been done, that, yeah. you know, that I'm thinking like, OK, t today, tomorrow, I'm, I'm actually planning to do a like a I'm making a big uh, move uh, in the next couple of days. So I'm thinking like, will everything operate? But according to your model, which makes sense, it's, you know, people are not ready for pandemonium and chaos and crashes and all that stuff that that this has to be done. Um, but on the other hand, I think that I think that the crash has to happen under Biden. But right. how do you make it? You know, you have to make it a gentle crash. I mean, is that is there such a thing? Yeah, and I'm going to answer that, but let me be polite and answer your previous question about the dinar and, and when we can start seeing, because I don't want the audience to think I'm glossing over your questions. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let, let's break this down. So where we are with the dinar is in an interesting place. Uh, Sudani, the prime minister we've talked about, has done everything to bring us up to the precipice, to the tipping point. He's done as much as he can do. He's passed all the, he's put all the laws. He's come to America. He's worked with Erdogan. They've signed 26 agreements. Everything's done. So people don't need to like, when is Iraq going to happen? It's already, again, like our economy, same thing. It's already happened behind the scenes. What we're waiting for is Israel to do their final part in hitting the secret nuclear power plants we talked about in Iran. Now, I sent you uh, offline, I sent you a uh, video, and you can share that with your audience, one of your subsequent shows this week after we're done, um, showing that there were hypersonic missiles sent from Iran to Israel over the weekend. So, is, excuse me, Iran is doing their part in the narrative to inflame Israel, poking the bear or poking the lion. To, for the, Israel is going to say enough, like Trump, enough, and move into position, take out those power plants. And you're going to see optically a big explosion, the whole world's eyes will be on Israel. Well, what Iraq will do, Sudani will then form an emergency government, which was talked about when this gets ready to happen. He'll form an emergency government. And in one day, what a surprise, pass all the laws. Everything is tucked underneath the oil and gas law that they have to share with the, the factions of the Shiites, the, Sud, the Kurds and the Sunnis. The Kurds comprise the largest block of 17, I think it's roughly 17% of the population there is, is Kurds give or take. Um, so that all has to happen to release the oil rights because the Iraqi citizens or residents are getting a different rate. 
they're going to get, I believe it's one to one, they'll get on the dinar plus oil uh, credits, like kind of Alaska gets, the residents get a stipend every year. I, somebody told me it was like 1500 bucks. I, I don't live there, so I don't know, but that's what I was told by somebody who lives there. Um, so they'll get that, but on a much higher level, obviously, because they have been suppressed from all their oil credits for years and years and years, decades. So they're going to have to catch them up to modern times. In terms of your question of when we can see uh, gold and silver uh, and other things start to, what'd you say, come front of scenes, I think was your question, right? Yeah, to really start rocketing. I mean, I would say, I would say the summer, probably in deep into the heart of the summer, because as soon as, again, as soon as Israel does their thing, it's going to create a domino effect because you're going to see uh, Iraq happen. You're going to see XRP's case be dropped by Judge Torres, who's just waiting for all this. You're going to see Jim Willie feel strongly that uh, it's interesting. It, I think people should watch that interview just to get his info because it's kind of telling. You saw it. He he believes that the Dong and Zim bonds through the dollars, because people ask me all the time, what about the bonds? They're going to get tucked in through the dollars, through the zig. Once Nelson Chamisa becomes president over there, elections are slated right now as of August 23rd, and then he comes in. So uh, I think you'll see all that happen. And as a result, once they do Fed rate cuts, the markets will explode, but then so too will gold and silver and other things. Because here's the thing, Eli, right? It's moves and counter moves. It's two different things. They're going to try, when I say they, the Fed, the cabal, are going to try to sell the public, hey, look, you know, the market's doing great, blah, 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 blah. Look at all these numbers. But people are going to go, oh, really? My pensions are down. I lost my job. Uh, you know, gas is up. Groceries are up, right? Uh, you know, I can't live the way I, I used to live. It's, it's untenable. So the people are not going to be fooled by that. I'm, I, your audience, my already, I'm, they already know that. I'm talking about the whole of society, the normies that don't know what we know. So I would say, all that said, probably the heart of the summer, we'll start seeing a breakout. Right. You're saying a heart like more like August, but but it's it's an event-driven timeline. In other words, it, it, yeah. it depends on these events happening. Correct. It, interesting. Um, I'm trying to think about, yeah, so, yeah, okay, yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's a wholly different totally different concept i i was thinking that we were going to see something with the market in the next couple of days and i've been on the lookout for that for years i'm waiting yeah. for the market to crash so i think i so i guess the the destruction of the fiat is really happening to people kind of in a quiet and a quiet way behind the scene with the inflation mm -hmm. and you know their pension i mean if you have your your pension and fiat currency it's it it it's got to be uh, upsetting to see this the the level of inflation that's going on exactly and that goes back to the last question you asked me now to catch up to where in your present line of questioning um as far as a crash so there's a couple ways i i believe that by the end of the this year, I, I don't know the month. Obviously, I'm not. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not God. But right, well, it's, uh, it's not time driven. It's it's really it's, it's really driven. Driven on the yeah. events. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I would say um, closer to the fall, if we have if we even have elections, and that's you know something we will, something we won't. I know the military. I mean, Trump said something over the weekend on one of his rallies about uh, the military's in charge. I don't know if people caught that. But I was kind of a big calm that they're going to step in at some point here, I think, in the late summer and say enough. So what a coincidence. Or or, or, or quite possibly that th that they won't, that they're, they've already stepped in mm -hmm. and they're already in control. And I right. my, I mean, I personally think that they're just going to allow everything to come. Although I think they're going to allow the election to just appear as though it's normal. But on the other hand, you have the Nassara Jassara rule the Nassar Jassara you, you have to give 120 uh, day notice for the election so maybe the two could go hand in hand maybe Nassar and Jassara could be announced let's see you know in uh three months before let's see uh, October uh September in yep. in August like you're saying that would be uh and that would kind of fit your timeline of, of late uh, or, or sometime in August maybe yeah it wraps into the summer perfectly to your point so as far as a crash, I think we're going to see sometime this year a 50% correction, which is technically a crash. It's kind of like an earthquake or a tremor. You know, technically a tremor is a form of an earthquake. It's just how, how much you feel it, how pronounced it is. So again, using another analogy, 
Unfortunately, I've had to go through a few of those here in California, which is another reason I'm looking forward to getting out. <laughs> when the earth moves, it's telling you it's time to move. But uh, <laughs> I'm a little com comedic joke. But um, I think we'll see the, the meat of the crash be sometime next year. Uh, but they are going to uh, let it, it, it's like taking the, uh, if you had like ginger ale, ginger ale or seltzer, you, you have to let the gas out a little bit, the controlled demolition. They're going to let that happen on the buffoon's watch for sure, the majority of it. And here's the other thing, Eli, you have to consider. You have the dollar, petrodollar, which is now done. You also have the 10-year treasury bonds. See, a lot of these countries own that and it's it's toxic to them. They're dumping it. Japan actually is one of, as Jim says, one of the most stealthy countries with getting rid of their, their treasury bond yields, which are tied to the dollar. Secretly, they're buying a lot of gold, just like China, which has decreased their currency by 22%, which is significant, right? It's almost a quarter of its worth because they got to get rid of it. So when the treasury bond yield market hits a certain threshold, if it drops 10% this year, which looks likely, you're going to see a 30% correction in the dollar, which is technically a crash. So to answer your question, I think it'll be, uh, some of it will happen this year and the majority will be next year. I, I'm just, I just want to um, understand this. How, how do you think that will manifest the 30% crash of the dollar? I mean, how, what will that look like? Uh, if to the everyday person, I, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, well, it's this is why we encourage people to become their own central bank and have foreign currencies, have gold and silver, have the right bonds, have the right cryptos and, you know, have food and water. All those things is to level up against that, mitigate that. I think it will look like a lot of hyperinflation in America. We're going to start to see inflation continue. It's not to fear people. It's to it's to prepare. If you have these things you're good because you confront it off, right? But to the everyday person who doesn't know any of this stuff, they're going to see hyperinflation at the pumps. They're going to see hyperinflation at the, the gas stations, hyperinflation of, I don't know, tires and whatever you need to buy to live, you know, diapers and all these sundry things that people go through. Um, it's it's going to hit them, hit them in the wallet pretty hard. So I think that that kind of is in alignment to our whole idea that this is going to be, I mean, kind of what I would describe as w within nature. In other words, it, it won't be like yeah. colossal events. It'll just seem like holy mackerel. I mean, it's already like that. I mean, I go to the grocery store and, uh, you know, I, I, I measure uh, the inflation rate by organic grapefruits because I, I like I like organic grapefruits. So they were two for five dollars at the local store. Now it's in New York City. And now mm -hmm. it's two for seven dollars just a, a few months later. So and who yeah. knows, you know, I'm just but I, I think people are already feeling the squeeze. And uh, but, yeah, it makes sense that, that if the military is in control and, you know, if the bad guys are, have been neutralized to some extent. And for me, my uh, bellwether, maybe I, my the way I measure the strength of, of evil is by the chemtrails. Mm. And uh, my girlfriend said today she didn't see any chemtrails. We didn't see any on Saturday. We saw one or two on Sunday. And today, Monday, no uh, no significant chemtrails yet. But I'm I'm not willing to say the uh, deep state is down to the count. But but oh. it could be that they're they're more down from what you're saying. Like here I am waiting for the, you know the official you know crash of the market. But it it could just be that everything is going to happen within nature. Like in McGillis Esther, you know the story of Esther. Mm -hmm. he, God is never mentioned in in the text. It's just like these miraculous things are just happening, and it seems like it's happening naturally. But in actuality, it's it's a higher level of a miracle than if it, if you know the sea was splitting and all this you know angels coming down and all that other stuff that it's just you know that i think i think with the with the military in control i think things are going to appear to be normal and like you say behind the scenes the dollar will be inflating itself out of existence so without without a lot of drama people will, mm. will just personally feel the squeeze and you know, and, and have to wake up because the, I mean, it'll, they'll be at the precipice. Well, the good guys know, as I agree, as you know, the good guys know that a lot of people don't have the same level of faith and vision. Everybody's at a different place, right? 
So for the normies, they must be shown. You know, they don't believe until they see it. Okay, fine. Here you go. Right now, it's funny you mentioned Esther because in the Old Testament, in the Bible, Esther is a fabulous and interesting character. Right, her faith was tested. Haman was trying to hang her for her faith as an as an Israelite. Right, and what happened? Haman on the gallows. What he tried to put her through actually happened to him. That's exactly what I see as an analogy for evil here. Right, God's in control. At, at the end of the day, no matter what people try to do, God's in control, and He's going to usurp man's agenda. Or as it says in uh, Genesis uh, 50, 26, what you meant for harm, I will use for good for the saving of all souls, right? And, and all that that entails. Now, I want to make an important point, if I may, real quick, Eli, is I think that words matter and terms matter. And these, these demons made a living in the, in the banking system and the legal system and all that using terms to be real vague so people would get frustrated and confused and not partake in the in their own financial affairs because it was just too confusing right good example right you mentioned the grocery stores earlier most people don't i mean some people know but most people don't know uh how that actually works and i had this discussion months ago with bill holter who is uh, a, a precious metals genius as far as i'm concerned I mean, he knows how the old system really works and how to counteract it and he mentioned to me that the way that the grocery stores work, the way that your hardware stores, uh, sporting equipment stores, everything is based on credit. But let's break that down, Eli. What is credit? Debt. You have a credit card, you have debt because you have to pay it back, right? We're going to get down in a minute. But your bank account, whether it's a tier one bank or a credit union, that's they call it a debit, but it's actually credit because it's it's the bank's money but you have theoretically, you know, possession and access to it, right? So there you go. Um, but, you know, most the places, you know, when the, when the, when the uh, oil rig trucks pull up to gas stations, they put those gas stations on 30, 60, 90 net payments. Accounts receivable is familiar with that, those who've done accounting. But those are net 30, 60, 90 payment terms. That's credit. That's a debt extenuation. Right. So the dollar, as we know, slash knew it, uh, is a debt. You were just all we're doing is exchanging debt, IOUs for IOUs, literally. And you know that because it takes you more of those dollars to buy the same crap you've been buying your whole life. You're not getting more of it of a product, you're not getting better of a product, right? So I want to give a definition. I want to give credit also where credit is due, as always, to X22. He put out a great report yesterday, as he always does, good old Dave. And I know some people that have met him before, which is kind of cool. Uh, his wife and kids and whatnot. But he made a very important distinction I want you, Eli, and your audience to hear. There is a difference between a central bank, okay, and a private Western central banking system. People are like, what's the difference? I, what, aren't they the same thing? And, you know, a while ago, I thought, this, I thought the same way that would people say, yeah, what's the difference? There is a difference. A central bank, which every country has, Japan, China, India, you know, Ireland, everyone, uh, that's a system where it's the people's money. They own the money. It's a stable rate. It's used. They can trade it for gold and silver. We used to be able to do that prior to Nixon 1971. We're going back to that. We're also going to implement technology with digitalized tokens. You know, we've talked about that. And they had a full separate control from the cabal. Whereas a private Western Central Bank is what happened post 1971. You don't control the money. There, it, it fluctuates based on interest rates. What is interest? Fraud. What is taxes? Fraud. Uh, you can't control it. You can't exchange it for gold and silver. Go ahead and try to do that now and see what happens, right? Go to the bank and try to do that. Good luck with that. You'll be able to do it going forward, but not right now. Uh, and, and they own it and they can manipulate it any way they want. And the cabal who's trying to wake people up with, hey, uh, you know, take our CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. <laughs> For those who don't know, which I can't believe here would be that many, let's say this is a dollar. You physically hold a worthless piece of debt instrument. They want you to give that away and not hold a physical worthless piece of instrument for something digital you can't even touch and control. Does that make a lot of sense? Obviously not, right? Um, but, uh, but that's really kind of the breakdown of that. I also wanted to point out to you, Eli, for your audience, that Vietnam's government about a month or two ago has said that they are going to start working with the Forex, the foreign exchange market. That's where all the current foreign currencies are housed, as you know. 
they're going to start pumping up their Vietnamese dong. Why? Because the dollar is dead. The petrodollar is dead. Everybody's watching Saudi Arabia systematically move away from the dollar. OPEC's moving away. China is moving away, right? Everybody's buying gold hand over fist because their central banks have to be backed in gold. Just like in America, our banks are going to have to become Basel three and four compliant. You have to show what you have on your balance sheets of actual physical gold, or you can't be around anymore because people will be able to go back and exchange their paychecks or their commissions or their residual royalties, whatever they have, you know, passive income for physical or digital gold and silver that they can convert physically, whatever you like, see options. Um, so that's important. Also, uh, I don't know if you saw over the weekend, Belgium's prime minister, Alexander de Croo resigned. That's, we're in the season of surrender. Uh, Ireland elected an anti-illegal immigrant uh, uh, Governor Maliki, or P, excuse me, PM Maliki Steenenson. So that's kind of big, right? And I'm trying to think what else. Oh, uh, Texas is planning to have its own uh, stock exchange to compete against the New York Stock Exchange, uh, as well as uh, they've been in talks for a while to join the BRICS and have their own digital gold backed token, which is in the works. So that tells me that, that they are restoring the Republic. And this is just my own speculation. I don't know this, but could that be the new White House? We'll find out. Yeah, that makes sense. I've heard BlackRock is uh, behind the new uh, the new uh, stock market. So yeah, it could be. And I, I've heard, have you heard also that uh, Fort Knox is in possibly in Las Vegas or Nevada somewhere? Is, is that? Well, the, what I do know is that the the main treasury is in Reno, Nevada, Reno, because yeah. that's on sovereign Native American soil. That happened years ago. Um, a lot of the servers for the dinar, going back to that, are in Texas. Uh, so, you know, Rod Steele pointed that out many years ago. He's correct, so I have to give him props for that. Uh, so those servers are in Texas. Um, there was talks that the White House might be in Frisco, Texas, the new one. So they're decentralizing the old DC system and breaking it up in, in constitutionally friendly states like Texas and wherever else. Um, but I do know the treasury is wholly based in Nevada. As far, as far as Fort Knox, I believe once Trump is optically back in, what he's gonna do is appoint Judy Shelton as his new Fed chair because she's a big gold bug. They, if you remember, they tried that in the first term. They did that on purpose to see how people would react. Just like when Trump said he was against Bitcoin and cryptos, now he's for it. He's trying to flush out the bad guys to see, okay, who's going to be pro CBDC and who's going to be against it? Who can I trust and who can't? It's, it's, it's all moves and counter moves again. Do you feel, I mean, just in terms of crypto, do you feel that Bitcoin is slated for the garbage can since it's, uh, it doesn't have any real uh, fundamentals? I think it's going to be used for good right now. It's bad, but I think it's going to be converted once it's asset backed and it's, they flush the bad guys out. Cause they're not going to let the bad guys get in on our currency exchange. And they're not, you know what I mean? They're not going to let people, they already know who's bad and who's good. Uh, it's not a surprise. Um, Cause like you said, the military's already stepped in. They've been there every step of the way. I, I think it'll be repurposed for something good to what extent I don't know, but um, I think it'll be because it's going to be a decentralized peer to peer transaction. Think of it this way, Eli. Today we have, and I've been thinking about this a lot over the weekend in anticipation for this meeting. Um, today we have Zelle, PayPal, Venmo, right? Right now they're, they're not run by good guys. I think they will be run by good guys. I think what they're going to do is you're seeing a lot of banks closing up left and right. I cheer every time I drive down PCH because we saw a major Walgreens get shut down and they were pushing the COVID jab and the flu jab, which is basically the COVID jab. And what I think the good guys are doing is they're shutting down big pharma, right? And the reason they're doing that is to, to shut them down through the pharmacies to start to get people used to the idea of natural therapies, cures, part of Nasara, med beds, right? So I think that's a calm for that. But uh, in thinking about the, the, the other subject of, of money, um, I think like, again, Venmo, PayPal, uh, Zelle, uh, eventually what's going to happen is with the aid of things like XRP, XLM, possibly Bitcoin, you and I, let's say, Eli, I want to hire you to do, I want you to teach me about the Torah, right? And because you're, you're subject matter proficient on that. And I want to learn to grow my faith. I hire you to do that. And I pay you 
through Zen, uh, Vell or, Zell or Venmo, uh, but you get the money directly. There's no bank involved now. It's just peer to peer. There's no fees. There's no delay. You get it in a nanosecond. So I say that to say, I think that's how they're going to leverage Bitcoin in the mix of the new uh, asset backed digital economic reality. Interesting. All right. Well, it was, you know, it was great seeing you. I just, you, uh, I, I thank you for sharing so much information. I'm really, I'm not, I, I've Pardon. kind of like stepped back from the whole really trying to analyze the movie and not that I'm saying that there's anything wrong with it, but I just, I feel like there, that, that, it, in my community, my uh, online community, there's more of a need for just, sure. you know, staying calm and and really uh, learning to connect with uh, our higher, the higher realms. I agree. I mean, I think your audience, you do a great job of managing people's uh, um, stress levels. And this is a great way to counteract it, keeping them, you know, whatever people need to do to be grounded right now, I think is really important. Grounding taking your shoes off and just connecting with the earth. It's a great way to do it. I'm sure you tell people about that. And my audience definitely needs that as well, uh, along with, um, you know, strengthening their faith and, and, and bolstering it for these times. Cause we're going to see a lot of crazy wacky stuff, June and July, that's going to look kind of off the wall, but it's because we're in the birthing pains of the new season. So um, as we wrap things up, what, uh, what last message or what, well, first of all, where can people find out about your work? And what message do you have for the audience? Right. Well, I'm on on X. I'm e web e webstar thirteen on on YouTube. I'm Gnostic Guru, and but I take my my uh, videos off after I, I take I I record live and then I remove them because I've been taken down ten times from YouTube. And but a, a Rumble on Rumble, I'm just Guru G U R. If you if you go on to uh, you, I'm Kabbalah Guru on Rumble. But if you just you know if you just search Guru G U R U, you will find my Rumble is really my home now. And, and by the way, uh, I don't I don't know if you you're a Rumble person, but it, it's you are yeah. It seems like they're changing the uh, paying system, which is huge for me because I haven't been able to make a living since uh, YouTube took me off uh, a couple mm. of years ago. So I'm I'm hoping that eventually I'll be able to make a living again. So I'll you be will. able to buy as many uh, organic grapefruits as I want. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you'll you'll have your own land and you'll be able to grow your own, and then you won't even Actually, eat. Them. Yes, you're absolutely right. To be yes. precise, no. In the meantime, yeah. Now I hadn't heard that about Rumble, but that's good to hear because I know that they're very good about not censoring content. Because like yeah. I said, Jim yeah. Jim Willie would never see the light of day on YouTube. You know, we no, try to explain no. that to our audience, and they get upset when we do a preview. I'm like we can't put the whole thing on. We've told you that. So our only recourse is to direct you to redirect you to Rumble. But I, I do pray that they are, you know, improving the payment system. Um, and again, for your audience and my audience on our end, it, you know, just to let people know if you're interested in trying to get gold, precious metals, silver, whatever, uh, or cash out that 401k and those IRAs, because uh, yeah, the, those paper markets going to be bad news. Um, we'll we'll give you a, a vendor that we trust that in the in the description and the link. We'll also put your links in the description, Eli, as well, so people can have an easier path to you. If you are trying to get foreign currencies or bonds, any of those th um, uh, notes in different denominations, we have a great vendor as well, and we'll also leave that in the description link. So check for that. Uh, great to see you, brother. Look forward to connecting with you again soon. And thanks for being here. Thanks so much, John. All the best. Likewise.